So organizations trying to solve social problems increasingly have to demonstrate impact. Uh, this is what they have to do in order to scale up and get access to more resources. So, but what should they measure and how should they go about doing it? So Dean Carlan, who's a professor at, um, North, of economics and finance at Northwestern University, is going to talk to us about his new book and the new principles called the Goldilocks Challenge. Dean, welcome to INSEAD and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, very quickly, could you give us an introduction uh, to the Goldilocks Challenge? What, what problem does it address and what solutions does it propose? So, the basic idea of the Goldilocks Challenge is a, a toolkit, a framework, for helping organizations, whether it's a nonprofit, government, it could even be for a social enterprise, a for-profit firm, um, to think about what data and what data system and what data analysis strategy is right for them and getting the right fit. Not too much, not too little, but getting the right amount. Okay. So can you quickly go over some of the key principles of the framework? Yeah, so we, we actually came up with an acronym called CART um, for, the, for the book. Um, CART stands for credible, actionable, responsible, and transportable. So very briefly, credible means two different things. Collect accurate data. Are the data actually high quality? If it's measuring X, is it, does it actually a good measure of X? Is it being collected in a reliable way? Is it, is it biased? But it also means, are you analyzing the data in a credible way? This is one of the, one of the, the toughest things for organizations in many cases. You know, 20 years ago, we saw a huge push in the development economics for doing randomized trials, and specifically in order to try to do more credible analysis of, of outcomes in order to know, is a program working or not? And so by credible, what we mean is, Collect accurate data, good data, but also analyze it well and don't make claims about impact with data that don't actually tell you much about impact. Actionable means make sure that you actually have a plan for using your data. It's striking how often we see data collected where if you know, the answer is above 10, they say, well, well, I don't believe those results. Something's wrong with the data, so we'll ignore that. And if the answer is below 10, they go, great, that just tells us we should keep doing what we're doing. Responsible refers to weighing the cost and benefits of the data. Data are costly. It's not just costly to collect sometimes, particularly with the big data world, we're getting cheaper and cheaper data, but it still costs management time to look at the data, analyze the data, think about the data, have meetings about the data, and so there's a cost. What are the benefits? How much is it gonna actually change organizational behavior or management decisions? And then the T for transportable is the tougher one. We wanna be able to transport this knowledge to other contexts that might be transportable even just to next year in the same context, but a different economic condition. Let me ask you a slightly broader question. So based on this book, The Goldilocks Challenge, and your previous book, how do you think economists and policymakers' uh, approach to tackling poverty, how has that sort of changed from what used to happen, let's say, 10 or 20 years ago? I think two things have changed. One is analytical, and the other is just about cost. So I'll go in reverse order. The cost of data has gotten radically cheaper. The cost of collecting data, communicating, coordinating projects, and, and that has led to a lot, of more, a lot more data being collected. So I think a lot of, a lot of studies that we're seeing done were simply not possible before um, because it's gotten cheaper to analyze and collect, um, collect data. Um, but there's also been a big shift in, in using randomized trials to measure the impact. This is a, a tool that has been around forever where you can actually see not just how did the lives change of people in a program, but how their lives would have changed without that program. And that comparison is what gives you that measure of impact. And so, you know, there's been some, you know, just a huge, huge increase in, in stakeholders, both government and nonprofits, wanting to take that question more seriously than they were before. And, and a huge, huge increase in the number of researchers um, energized in doing this kind of research. So do you have a particular example in mind which you could uh, enlighten us with where randomized trials have actually made a difference and you know, this has led to a rollout of a program successfully? Teaching at the right level is an example of, of a program that we're now seeing scaled up at the country level in Ghana. We're seeing efforts in Botswana, um, Tanzania, Kenya. And this is something that was tested in India, Kenya, and Ghana, where basically we found that, that pulling children out of class who are, who are lagging behind on basic literacy and numeracy and giving them a more tailored curriculum that's focused to their level was very successful at increasing test scores for these children. 
So many of our listeners are very uh, well acquainted with the term impact assessment, but in the book that you are going to release very soon, you also make this distinction between impact assessment and monitoring. Can right. you just tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so basically the distinction we're making is impact assessment is, is a social science question. It's, a, it's asking the question, well, what is the change in the life of people in a program compared to how their life would have been without this program? And the challenge with impact assessments is answering that second part. And you don't get that out of administrative data. Um, and you don't get that out of just following people over time in a program. You have to know what would have happened had they not been in a program. So that's a much more difficult thing. That's where randomized trials do come in. There are other techniques other than randomized trials, but that requires a fair amount of expertise typically to do. Monitoring is more about management data. It's about saying, are you doing the things you said you would do? And how is, is your implementation at uh, maintaining high fidelity? Are you implementing well? It could include things like getting feedback from people. So thank you, Dean Carlan. Thank you for being at INSEAD. I look forward to reading your book. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.